the HP Spectre X360. Let's take a look. Yo, what up YouTube, Crash Wilcox, and I got another laptop review for you. Uh, don't do these a ton, but just so happens the last two videos that I put, uh, put out are laptop videos. So if you wanna see my previous one on the Zephyrus G14, I'll have that up here and then I'll link it in the description as well. Wonderful laptop, but basically the, the crux of it was the Zephyrus G was going to be uh, the Zephyrus G14 was going to be my kind of everyday daily driver laptop. Bought it. It was wonderful, but then I ran into an issue with some frame drops that updating drivers, messing around, Windows installs, all sorts of things couldn't fix. So I wound up just returning it. And in the process, doing a little bit of extra digging, I instead decided to leave or move away from the Zephyrus G14 into the Spectre X360. So in this video, we're just gonna kind of take a look at this as it, was, uh, as it pertains to like productivity and gaming and such. So um, I will touch a little bit on the, I guess kind of the negatives and then kind of give you my take on why I decided ultimately to go with this computer 
Um, we'll mix in some benchmarks as well and then uh, wrap it up. So this is the X360 4K AMOLED screen, I believe it is. Um, 10th gen i7 with the 1650 Ti. So this thing, so again, to get the negatives out of the way, I don't know if they're necessarily, I mean, they're negatives, I guess, but I just wanted to kind of make the case of who this laptop isn't for um, before I go into ultimately why I decided to get it and who I think it fits. So starting off, if you're a gamer, if gaming is like your number one and maybe streaming that game is your number two reason for having a laptop, I would steer clear of the uh, the Spectre X360. It The reason I say that is, first off, it is a 4K laptop, and because of that, it has a 60 hertz screen. Um, hard to find laptops with 4K screens that are above 60 hertz. So if you're a competitive gamer, that's probably gonna put you at a disadvantage. And secondly, 1650 Ti, not really ideal if you're in the gaming realm. Um, we'll get into some of the benchmarks so you can see how well it does perform. But if you are a gamer, first and foremost, uh, I would recommend maybe go check out that Zephyrus G14 review I did. Fabulous gaming laptop, highly recommend it. Just uh, watch out for that frame drop issue. I don't think that was indicative of the entire line. I think I just got maybe uh, unlucky there a little bit. So. The second person I don't think this laptop is for is if you are a content creating professional, maybe a professional video editor or professional you know, 3D animator, and this is going to be your main computer. So if you're mainly working from a laptop, I would steer clear of this. And the reason I would say that is it only has 16 gigabytes of RAM. It's not upgradable. That is soldered in. It only has one M.2 slot, which you can upgrade. You know, I think now you can get all the way up to like eight terabyte M.2s, but still not ideal. I mean, no one's really, you know, gonna go out and shell out that kind of money for, you know, an eight terabyte M.2 when you could instead maybe get something in the line of a Razor Blade Studio. Um, you know, cause obviously this, the 10th gen Intel, is a fine CPU, it's nothing to write home about. Um, but the 1650 Ti, not gonna be the best GPU for you if you're a content creating professional. Um, that's where something like the Studio, when you get into like the Quadro cards or even maybe a higher end RTX card, it's gonna be better for you in that realm. Um, but the person that I would say this laptop is for is if you're like me, this is, sort of your average user. If you are um, just looking for something that's got a beautiful screen, see so if you can get this thing opened up here, got a beautiful screen, a nice user experience, maybe you content create a little on the side, like I do a small YouTube channel, you game a little on the side, but those aren't your primary focuses. And also you have a desktop at home where you can do the majority of your work at. So this is just an on the road, you want a nice experience and that's gonna be, I think, the main audience for this. So just walking through sort of the specs, and I'm not gonna do a deep dive into the specs here, there's other videos on that. Um, but just so you guys have some idea, so you can see if you look over here, and I'll try to have another little uh, snippet so you guys can see this better, but it has USB-C. I believe this is the Thunderbolt 3 port. It has another USB-C here, USB 3.0 type A, I believe. And then it has a micro SD slot down here, which is nice. And then coming on the other side, it has your, um, your power like barrel plug right there it has HDMI and then it has like your headphone jack down there um, and that's about it for port selection so it's not the most robust port selection but it is nice oh I think I also forgot to mention uh, one of the nice features 
It does have this little um, webcam kill switch, which is basically kills it at the hardware level. So it, it doesn't just like, you know, put a slide over your webcam, it'll actually kill it. So that's a nice security feature there. And then going into that, it does have the webcam, which the Zephyrus G14 did not have, which isn't a make or break, but it's nice to have. And it's not a great camera. I think it's 720p, um, but it's a camera. And if you're in a pinch, that's nice to have. It does have the Windows Hello features. So if you want to do facial recognition to unlock your screen, it has that. And it is a two-in-one. So that's something else that's nice about it. It's a convertible. And on this part, it does also have the fingerprint sensor, um, which is nice. The Zephyrus G14 had one as well, but I find that this, it works 100% of the time. It's, I've never had an issue where I've had to run my fingerprint a second time to unlock it. So fabulous. Um, it has a big keypad on it. It's not the, the biggest, you know, it's not XPS level or MacBook level, but it's fairly big. And what I like about this one, as opposed to the XPS, is it has the speakers up top. So it does have four speakers, two on the side, on the bottom here, and then two on top. And if you see the XPS layout, its speakers are down the side of it. And because of that, they move the keyboard up, which elongates this sort of bottom bevel area of the laptop, which I don't like. And, you know, considering the XPS is sort of the competitor of this laptop, or this is the XPS competitor, uh, I like this narrower bottom bezel, uh, if you want to call it. And the, I like having the number pad on here as well. So this does have the 10 key number pad. And because of that, offsets your touchpad a little bit, maybe concerning to some, but I find that typing on this thing is a breeze. Um, very nice to type on. Touchpad doesn't get in the way at all. And the keys, they are wonderful to type on. Um, they have a little bit of a snap to them, but sort of a softness as well. I don't know how to describe that any better, but just a joy to type on. Works really well. And uh, yeah, so it is 4K and it's touch screen as well, which is something that I wanted. It comes with a stylus. So it does come with a stylus as well. And I know some of the models, I believe, come with a stylus that has a quad uh, or that takes a quad A battery. This is the rechargeable one, which is nice. All you do is slide this top piece out and it reveals the, uh, the USB-C charging port. While you're charging it, it is like an amber orange color around the ring while it's charging and then a white light around the ring when it's fully charged. So that's a nice touch. And then it also included this little, I think they call it a folio, um, just a little laptop carrier, which is a nice touch when you wind up paying as much as you pay for this laptop. So um, I wound up paying right around $2,000 for this and that's pricey. So it's nice that they throw in a little customer appreciation there. So um, that's sort of the quick specs. You know, you can see this thing um, has a large sort of um, vent down at the bottom where it sucks in the air and then it blows it out on both sides up here. It does get hot, but not nearly as hot as the Zephyrus G14. That thing was an inferno, but it had a lot stronger components inside of it as well. So it makes sense. But so those are kind of the rough overview of the specs and then who I think this is for and who it's not for. Um, so with that out of the way, we're going to jump into some of these benchmarks. I think we're going to run through Heaven's Bench, sort of a synthetic. We'll do some Valorant, Valorant, I don't know how you say it. Some um, SnowRunner. Then we'll do like Cinebench, V-Ray, Geekbench. Uh, I'm not too big on the Geekbench or the V-Ray, but um, I'm just having them up there. So if you are into that, you can see how this thing would stack up. And then once those are done, we will jump back in here and I'll give you my final thoughts on sort of the overall laptop experience and why, again, this is what I chose. So, all right, let's get to these benchmarks.
All right, so the benchmarks are wrapped up. So as you guys can see, it games fairly well, I think. You know, it does have a dedicated graphics card. It is a GTX graphics card. And honestly, it games better than I thought it would. You know, hitting over 144 frames in Valorant uh, or Valorant. Um, even getting up near the 60 FPS mark in SnowRunner. So you could tweak some of those settings a little bit and play SnowRunner pretty well. You know, but really I think a lot of the gaming that you would do on this is kind of those free sport or free play, free to play esports, um, not really necessarily AAA gaming. Although it can do some of that, you may just have to tweak the settings a little bit. Um, but like I said, if you're a casual gamer, then gaming on this is great. If you're a competitive gamer, stay away. And um, then also you can see from some of those Premiere Pro um, benchmarks. You know, it can do some content creating, but again, you don't want to rely on this solely as your content creating machine. I think there's much better options out there in that $2,000 price range. So the reason why I chose this one, as I said earlier, it's competitor is sort of that Dell XPS, um, the MacBook Pro sort of in those classes. And there's a few reasons why I decided to go with this one over the other two obviously if you're into mac that's a whole separate issue you know mac is for the mac users uh, but on the pc side of the house is kind of this uh the dell xps and kind of the main thing that jumps out and i mean you guys can see it this thing doesn't look like anything else it is <laughs> it stands out it you know when you see the dell and the MacBooks, you know, they look sleek and nice, but man, they do not have, I don't know how else to say, like the sex appeal <laughs> that this thing has. It's gorgeous. The gem cut sides, uh, I think they call it Nightfall Black. Then uh, kind of the gold accents around the side. Just all of it screams sort of that elegant look. And like I said, this is sort of a, not a daily driver. I wouldn't say that because I don't use it all the time. I mean, I do have a desktop but sort of just an on the go, overall average user experience, maybe content create a little bit, but generally you just kind of surfing the web, playing a game here and there at night, whatever happens to be. Um, so I like just the overall aesthetics of it. It looks really nice. And then the screen, let's see if we can get this thing opened up here. The screen was a big selling point. So I know that 4K is sort of not necessary on a screen this big, but I like it for just how vibrant the colors are on it. So I'll have the the numbers up here on the screen, but I think it's like 100% sRGB accuracy, 100% DCI P3 accuracy, and I think roughly like 95% Adobe RGB. So those numbers were kind of hard for me to find, but they're pretty close. Take my word for it. Um, but the screen is just vibrant. So this, you know, if you go all the way max brightness, and this isn't plugged in, but the colors get vibrant, you can get pretty dim, um, but the screen's just beautiful. It's touch screen again, which is something that I wanted, um, trying to dabble in sort of that graphic design, trying to get started in that a little bit. So. Being able to do all of that without having to get extra, you know, components like, you know, tablets and that sort of thing. Just do it all on the screen here is nice. Um, the audio in here is fine. It says it's Bang and Olufsen, which I guess that's a name, so it's, it's good. Sure, I don't know. Um, but the audio is fine in it. And, you know, I wanted something that ultimately you know i could game on they had i think this is the most high-end variation of the x360 lineup um, they do have some that come with just the intel iris plus graphics which is basically integrated graphics plus they also have i think it comes with the mx330 variation of this um, but i wanted the 1650 ti just so i could enjoy some gaming because you know i am a nerd i do like the game and I can certainly do what I need to do on this computer. And then, um, lastly, I mean, I just, again, I liked 
the actual user experience of typing on it. It feels good. Um, it doesn't run terribly hot. And um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm not a Mac guy, so that was kind of out of the question. But just comparing this to the XPS, they both sort of line up with each other. But man, just the way that the, as I mentioned before, the keys are pushed down a little bit closer to that bottom bevel I like. And then um, the touchpad, I like the location of it, and I think it's big enough. So that was kind of the, the reason I decided to go with this one. Um, a few other cool things to note, they do have, I think the button, they do have like the little HP command center button right here. You can hit to open that up, change the fans. Um, and then another thing they have on here, which I like, another security feature right here is the mic mute button. So just the one quick mute the mic, kill the, the, uh, the webcam if you need to, uh, makes it really simple, a little extra security. So all in all, man, that's why I went with it. And I have to say in the last um, few days that I've had it, certainly enjoyed it. It's been very nice to work with. I'm actually making this video on here. So it can content create. And just a few workarounds that you can uh, do on your own to sort of make up for the limitations that this thing has. So the first one, you know, it only has the one M.2 slot. So like I mentioned before, you can go and buy a bigger M.2, um, you know, obviously to a point, you know, they get pretty expensive. But also with that micro SD card reader, you can essentially use that as a secondary hard drive. You know, you can get something like this 512 gigabyte M.2, or not M.2, but SD card. And obviously it's not gonna be as fast as your main hard drive, but if you just need something for files and storage, 80 bucks for 512 gigs that you can just slide into the side of your computer. Um, very simple, easy way to work around the limitation of the one M.2 slot. And then the other limitation that you can use to work around or that you can work around is the port selection. So you can go on Amazon and just grab something like this, a little USB-C to USB-A kind of um, dongle to give you a few extra USB ports. Or you can grab something like this USB-C to Ethernet um, connector, which I have and I use to hook this laptop up to Ethernet. And it works really well. You know, when I'm just on normal Wi-Fi, I'm getting around 300 megabytes upload speed and about 600 megabytes download speed. Um, and I have gigabit internet or internet in my house. So when I plug the Ethernet dongle in, I'm getting roughly 600 megabytes upload and right around 900 megabytes download. So not the full gigabyte um, experience, but it's really good, works really well on this. So all in all, it's expensive and it's not for everybody, but if you can swing it and you're kind of looking for a do-it-all computer, that will let you stand out from the crowd. I think this is a big winner. I'm really happy with this. I think HP knocked it out of the park with this one. And uh, yeah, I highly recommend it. So uh, please take a second if you could, if you found this valuable, like the video, subscribe to the channel, um, stay tuned. In the next couple of days, I'm gonna have sort of a uh, back to school PC building video, um, putting together a ultra budget computer. If you got a young kid like I do getting ready to start up school and maybe they're starting up from home this year, you can throw together a nice computer for really cheap. I think it's coming in right about 350 bucks for the entire computer. So stay tuned for that. And uh, man, I certainly enjoyed having you guys here. God bless.